Hi everyone, so in this video I'm going to show you all about the computer motherboard, parts and components. So let's get started. So first this is the CPU or the central processing unit and over here we have the CPU socket. Okay, so the first component is the CPU. So around the CPU we have some components like inductors as you can see. Basically this inductors, any inductor here means a channel. Basically the CPU has many power channels. We have three inductors means the CPU has three channels okay so every channel we find in every channel inductor capacitor and mosfets so as you can see we have three channels as you can see so for this channel we have inductor or coil we have capacitors and we have mosfets the second channel we have inductor or coil capacitors to filter the power and mosfets the third channel we have inductor here we have capacitor and MOSFET. So every channel contains inductor and capacitors for filtering purposes and MOSFETs. Okay? Here we have basically some ceramic capacitors around the CPU or PF capacitors. So the ceramic capacitors also has as a purpose to filter the, cu the current exactly like the other capacitor so we called it ceramic capacitors or PF capacitors PF means picofarad okay let's right now draw the CPU circuit in order to go deeper into understand it so let's assume that here we have the CPU okay or the processor so the CPU means the central processing unit so basically the CPU should be connected to an IC and some component. So basically here we have the VCC core, so the CPU should receive the VCC core about 0 0.9 to 1.2 V voltage DC. So the CPU should receive this power in order to work properly. Okay? So to get this power, we need some components. First, we need an IC or a power management IC. So basically, this is an IC or integrated circuit that will be charged to generate the VCC core for the CPU. Okay? So this IC itself should receive a VN on an input voltage about, about 19 volt and also other signals like enable signals, ID signals, clock signals, etc. So, of course, every IC should be connected to the ground. So, once this IC receives all input signals, it will generate two main control signals. Okay? So, these two control signals will control two MOSFETs in order to generate the VCC core. So the first control signal is the upper gate, okay? The upper gate control signals and the second is the lower gate control signals. So basically these two signals will be applied to two MOSFETs. This is the first MOSFET. Basically the reference of the MOSFET in the motherboard is Q. Okay, so let's assume that here we have the drain. So basically the drain is four pins connected together. Here, as you can see, we have source, three pins connected together. Okay, and we have the gate. So the control signal from the IC should be applied to the gate of the first MOSFET. Okay, so basically the drain of this MOSFET should be connected directly to some ceramic capacitors that will filter the input voltage. So, of course, these four ceramic capacitors should be connected to the ground. Okay, so 
as you can see here, we have C1, C2, C3, C4. Okay, so the input voltage will be passed through these capacitors and through the first MOSFET. So basically, the input voltage is about 19 volts. Okay, from the power jack. Okay, so the 19 volt will pass through these filtering capacitors and through this MOSFET. So of course here we have the control signal that is applied to the gate of this MOSFET. But we need another MOSFET, the second MOSFET, as you can see. So let's draw the second MOSFET, Q2. Okay, so we have Q1 and Q2. So the second MOSFET or the drain of the second MOSFET is connected to the first MOSFET and the source connected to the ground. Okay, and of course here we have the second gate is connected to the IC. We have the lower gate, the control signal. Basically, we have the gate, source, and drain. Okay, gate or source, gate, and drain. So the MOSFET is not like a transistor in terms of references. So here, between these two MOSFET, the VCC core will be generated. So the VCC core will be generated between these two MOSFETs. Of course, this power or this voltage, of course, after receiving the control signals, the upper gate and the lower gate from the IC. So the voltage generated between these two MOSFETs, of course, should be applied to some component like a diode. This diode is for protection purposes and to some capacitors that will filter this voltage because we need a pure voltage. The VCC core for the CPU should be a pure voltage, okay? So we have a protection diode, two capacitors for filtering purposes and of course an inductor. Always you will find an inductor in the output, okay? Then we will get the VCC core, okay, about 0.9 to 1.2 volt in accordance with the type of the CPU and the type of the manifold, okay? So an IC with two MOSFETs with all these components, of course, this is just the first channel, okay? We have other two channels, okay? So basically, the other two channels has the same working principle as these channels that we have drawing here, okay? But one IC will be charged for the three channels, okay? Basically, all circuits in the laptop motherboard or computer motherboard has the same working principle. Always you will find an IC, MOSFETs, capacitors, diodes, and the output voltage. Of course, the power management or the CPU power management IC should receive ID signals, about 8 signals, okay? This is ID signals. This ID signals will determine the VCC core value, okay? So, as you can see here, this is the GMCH or the Graphic Memory Control Hub or the North Bridge. This is basically its headsync. As you can see, so basically we have here the CPU, okay, and its channels, as you can see, each inductor means a channel, okay, inductor with capacitors and MOSFETs means one channel, as we have seen before. So the same working principle in the whole motherboard. For the processor, we have two, three channels here, but for other circuits, you will find just one channel for every circuit or every chip for example for example for the north bridge as you can see here under the heatsink we have the north bridge it has one channel of power so let's remove the heatsink basically the heatsink is used to cool down the chipset okay as you can see this is the heatsink basically here this is the north bridge or the gmc hedge basically this chip or the graphic card is integrated with this chip so here we have two chips the north bridge and the graphic card okay here 
as you can see, exactly like the CPU. So for the CPU we have three inductors as you can see, or three channels, but for the North Bridge we have just one channel. As you can see we have this inductor means one channel. Here we have capacitors. All these capacitors use it to filter the voltage in order to get a pure voltage because here we have a very sensitive devices or very sensitive component okay so we have capacitors we have inductor as you can see and of course mosfets okay here we have two mosfets as you can see so basically this mosfets is a three terminal mosfet and here also we have another mosfet for the ICH or the input output control hub or the salt bridge okay so this is a three terminal MOSFET as you can see here for the processor we have three MOSFETs because the processor the work of the processor is not like other components in the motherboard the processor did a very huge work in the motherboard that's why it has more than one channel basically do 8 pin MOSFET and the 3 pin or 3 terminal MOSFET are the same. They have the same working principle. Always you will find the gate, drain, and source. Okay? Always when a control signal arrives to the gate, the MOSFET will be operated. Okay? The same working principle. So here, this is the North Bridge, as you can see. Here this is the ICH or the salt bridge and over here we have the power management for these two chips where as you can see here we have capacitors all these capacitors are electrolytic capacitors 